So it's no secret, TikTok is an absolutely massive marketing opportunity for your business. But even if you don't want to make organic content, if you don't want to go out there and, and make your own content and, and build an audience, you can still capitalize on this with your business. In fact, I would venture as far as to say, if you have a business of any size and you're not using TikTok to some extent, you're missing out on a big business opportunity. So in this video, I wanna show you how to make a business account on TikTok, and we'll talk about some of the benefits of this, we'll talk about what you can do with it, and we'll talk about uh, the different approaches you can take, from organic content to paid content, and everything in between, other ways to get business ideas, because like I said, the truth is, so many people use TikTok for absolutely every aspect of their life now that you need to be putting your business out there on TikTok. For example, I went to a dinner party last week and every single thing the host made, they found on TikTok. For Christmas gifts, people are always buying things on TikTok. Everything is revolving around TikTok. People's entire lives are built on what they see on TikTok, which is, it sounds strange, but just do an audit of other people around you and you would be surprised by how much they're using TikTok. So with that being said, there are different accounts you can make on TikTok. Of course, the personal account is what most people have, but you're not a person, you're a business. You want to have a business account and there are quite a few benefits that come with this. One of them being the ability to see analytics. When you have TikTok for business, you can see insights on how long people watched your video, how many views you got, what the demographics were, and this is gonna help you to figure out who's watching them so you can remarket to those people, but also figure out exactly who your customer is. But like I said, even if you're not doing organic content, the second big category is TikTok ads. Because TikTok is such a large platform, people are scrolling through for a really long time and eyeballs cost money, right? So you can run ads, you can pay TikTok to show your content to specific people and make it actionable and make them, you know, very likely to click on your on your ad and, and go and purchase or whatever you're doing or, you know, sign up, become a lead, whatever it is you're doing with your business. The third thing TikTok for Business gives you is access to conversion tools uh, that can help improve conversion rates through uh, TikTok's own business tools. You also have the ability to set up TikTok shops to sell your products directly in videos. And there are other things like the ability to go live and, and the Creative Hub as well, which has a library of content that can help you uh, better manage your business on TikTok. Now, there are a couple really small drawbacks with having a TikTok for business versus a personal. Really the big one is that you won't be able to select just any audio you want. Instead, the audio tracks will need to be uh, copyright free, but because you're running a business, you already pretty much need to adhere to this anyway. So that's a summary of why you might wanna get a TikTok business account as opposed to just using a personal account. So if we want to, if I sold you on that, if you're really interested now, then the next step is to actually go ahead and do this. Okay, so now if you download the TikTok app, you can simply open it and we can create a new account here by tapping on sign up on the bottom. We're gonna use phone or email. We can select our birthday. And you can sign up with either phone or email. For businesses, usually email makes the most sense. Now we can create a nickname, which I'm just going to go with the, the name of the business. So it's called Santral Shop. Now we can actually just skip all of this stuff and swipe up, and now we will be on TikTok. So I'm gonna go over to, so I'm gonna go over to my account. I'm gonna go over to my account there. Uh, and from here, we can fill this out a lot more. So you can see the username is kind of garbage right now. We don't have a profile photo. There's a lot that's not set up on this yet. And again, this is going to be great for organic exposure as you start to make content on here. So let's go down here and uh, I'm gonna first tap on add. We're gonna add a photo. So we're gonna upload a photo. All right, so now we have a logo there. If we tap on edit profile, we can change the username because like I said, that's absolutely trash right there. Let's make it Santrell Shop, see if it's available. Santrell Shop. Central shop, save, it is available. Set that as our username. And now we have a good username. So we've got our, our URL there, tiktok.com slash at Central shop, nice. We can add a bio. And then of course we can add our Instagram and our YouTube. I highly recommend doing this just so you have other ways to connect between your TikTok and other social media platforms because there aren't a lot of options to link out on TikTok unless you go to a business account, of course. But for a non-business account, you can't link out until you have over a thousand uh, followers. So either way, it's nice to link to your YouTube and your Instagram, even if you do upgrade to a business account which obviously we're gonna do. So before we go to a business account, I'm just gonna share one random video just so I have something on here. So if we tap on upload, or you could tap on the plus on the bottom, we're gonna say upload, and I'm just gonna select a random video on my phone right here. We're gonna say next. You can give it some name. 
uh, give it like some description of the video, add hashtags if you want, and now I'm gonna post it. There we go, just so I have something there, I'm gonna go back to my profile, and once I reload this, we should have one right there. So if we tap on the hamburger icon, the three bars on the top right, we have some options on the bottom. One of them is creator tools. So if you stayed as a personal account, if you really need the other music options, you can stay as a personal account and you still do have some access to like analytics and, and some basic things like that. But we wanna switch over to a business account because we're running out of business. So if we tap on settings and privacy, we can tap on account and we can say switch to business account. And they're gonna tell us some of the benefits here. So we'll say next, like I said, you can learn about your audience with uh, more engagement insights and analytics. Uh, we can reach more people by amplifying uh, videos with ads, obviously, and we can access conversion tools, all of those I mentioned earlier in the video. Now, we, it wants us to choose a category. This will show on our bio uh, what we are. So I'm just gonna say we are a clothing and accessories company. We're selling so hoodies, merch, whatever. And so I'm gonna say next, we have to add our email and we can say create now. We'll say continue, we'll say okay, we'll say okay. And we're gonna post just another video right there. If we tap on our profile in the bottom right, you can see now we are a business account. So we can edit our profile again and we should have more tools. You can see email is now an option there. So if somebody taps on that when they visit our account, they can email us so they now have more ways to contact us. You also have the ability to have a little prompt like add yours. So you can create a new prompt there and you could say like uh, show us your hoodie or whatever and people could just like, you know, share that. Just another way to kind of give you more exposure. Now, even if you do plan on going the paid route, I still highly recommend trying to get as many followers as possible or at least up to a thousand so you can have that link in your description, in your bio. Uh, just another way that people can access you rather than being stuck only going to Instagram and YouTube and then linking over to your to your website from there. So that's kind of one little thing I wanted to mention here is that you do need to have a thousand followers in order to get a link on there. But let me sign out of this and show you my own Mike O'Brien account so you can see what it looks like when you have a link and what the analytics look like once you start actually getting some views. All right, so here is my other account. You can see that I can add a link on here simply by going to edit profile and I can add websites. So we can add my own website. I'll just do that right now. So I'll just type in my beacons.ai slash Mike O'Brien. It's kind of like a link tree. So I'll add that right here. And so now we have a website on my bio, which is really nice. Now going over to analytics, if we tap on the three bars, uh, I actually didn't switch this over to a business account. I switched back to a creator for this video. So if we go to settings and privacy, again, we can go down to um, the account right there and we can tap on switch to business account. We're gonna switch over to a business account right now. We can say I am a electronics reviewer. It's kind of, I, I guess makes sense. Add my email. Now I'm gonna say maybe later. So our profile is now completed. We can close out of this and you'll see that my regular bio is now a business profile. I still have the link there. I now have that email button as I said. And then below we have the Instagram, which I already linked to before. And we have a little add yours prompt if you want to kind of prompt people to show off like your, your merchandise or whatever, uh, that's one way to do that. So going back to the top right, we can go to creator tools. And from here, let's check out the analytics. So we can tap on analytics. And from analytics, we have four tabs across the top. And you can see the first one is the overview. We can change the time. So if we want to see that over the last 60 days, we can see how many views we got, how many profile visits, how many likes and comments. And we do have a graph down below. So you can see generally like, hey, more people are viewing on Saturdays. I should be posting more on Saturdays. More people are viewing later in the day. I should be posting at that specific time. And then across the top, we can go to content and you can see contents or video specific analytics. So I can look at which videos did the best over the last seven days. So for example, the first one there got 4,400 views just in the last week. And I could tap on that and see, all right, what's going on with this video? It has 175,000 total views, 11,000 likes. And I can go down and see, okay, well, what, what are people watching? When are they watching it? What's the retention? What do people like about this video? And so you can kind of go through and start to optimize your videos based on like, for example, the retention curve. If you like sneezed or coughed halfway through and the retention fell off, well, make sure you edit out the sneeze and the cough next time. You can also see a lot more about who the viewers are. If you tap on viewers, 
the gender split, the age split, the region where they're from. So I have a lot of uh, younger United States uh, kind of mixed on the gender, and that's that's going to be telling me who is watching my videos, who's watching that content. Now we can go over to followers, and this is kind of my audience as a whole on the channel. We can see we have a pretty even gender split, a little bit heavier on the male. Again, younger audience on, on TikTok, which is to be expected. Heavy on the United States, a lot of Chicago and LA viewers. Um, I'm not sure exactly why those cities, I didn't specifically target them, but this is what I was saying about the active time. So I can look at this and say, all right, it looks like 5, 6, 7 a.m., like this younger audience is just, they're not awake, they're not on TikTok at that time. But it looks like around noon and through the afternoon is really a good time for people to be on TikTok. So maybe I want to start posting at around 10 or 11 a.m. just before that wave really peaks. Or if you really want to catch it early, you can go to maybe 8 a.m. And that way people are going to be, or more of your audience is more likely to see your TikTok as soon as it comes out. We can go over to live, and if you have any live analytics that'll be showing up here, I can go to the live center. And, and right now, I, I haven't gone live yet, so it's not really anything there. But those are some of the creator tools you have when you're running as a business. This is only the organic half of it, especially when you're getting started out. You might not want to wait a long time to start building up an audience and build up that. And in fact, you may never want to do that. Maybe it does too much work and, and you're just not interested in doing that, in which case, Ads could be a really great thing. So if you are running e-commerce, if you are doing uh, like any type of really any business at all, then marketing on TikTok with paid ads could be a really good route for you. So in order to do that, we want to go over to, well, I have an affiliate link down below. You could either copy and paste that link on your desktop. You could open it on your phone. You could scan this QR code if you open up the camera app on your phone. So if you're watching on like a desktop or, or a TV right now, you can scan this with your phone or you can go to santrellmedia.com slash TikTok, and this will allow us to set up our TikTok for Business account. And, and the TikTok for Business account is going to be where we can actually run our ads. santrellmedia.com, so I can go to santrellmedia.com slash TikTok, and that will take us all to this page right here. And uh, like I said, you can actually access this in other ways, but if you wanna use our affiliate link, we believe in free information. This is how we make our videos free. It costs absolutely nothing to you to use our link instead of Googling this, but you know you do have the option to Google it if you didn't want to use our link. So we wanna go down and tap on get started. We can enter our email or we can sign up with TikTok because we already have an account. That's probably the easiest way to integrate everything into one. We're gonna say sign up with TikTok, but we first have to agree to the terms of service. We're gonna say sign up with TikTok. And our TikTok, we're gonna sign in with our username and our email, like I said. So I'm going to log in. And now it's gonna ask if we wanna link up the Santral Shop TikTok with TikTok for Business, which is exactly what I wanted to do. And it's gonna tell me some of the things it's able to do. That's all good. We're gonna say authorize. And that will bring us back to this page here where we can tap on get started. All right, and then we have to review and accept their terms and their ad policy. And now it's gonna ask what we want this for. So we could try to advertise for website traffic, which would be ideal for uh, if you are selling a product or something and you want people to land on a web page where they can buy said product, that would be probably your best option. The second one is to collect leads. This would make sense if you don't have a physical product to sell, but rather you are looking for leads. You're consulting, you're like lawn care, you're whatever, looking to offer quotes. That would be where you'd wanna collect leads. And the last one is for engagement. I generally don't recommend that one, uh, just because if you want to grow a following, like doing it organically is way better than, than paying to get followers like this. Like it just doesn't work out from my experience. So I'm gonna say website traffic. That's the one that makes the most sense for what I'm doing right now. And now it's gonna prop, it's gonna prompt me to choose uh, the media that we want. So I'm gonna go from, let's just go with this one right here. Just a simple little video, like me sitting here saying sample video and that's gonna be sufficient. I can say next, and it kind of it's gonna walk us through making this ad right here. So promotional link, enter the URL that we want to promote. So let's just say I want to send people over to uh, just my own homepage, centralmedia.com. So HTTPS, centralmedia.com. I can say submit. That's the URL that it will be promoting. Then we have the ads preview. It's gonna look pretty much like a regular video, but on the bottom we have that little button that says learn more. We can choose what that actually says. But if I just hit play right here, we can see. Sample video. Yeah, just, just me saying it's a sample video. Pretty terrible ad, video. but you get the idea. That that's your your ad would be right there. And then below we have the call to action, which right now is learn more. But we probably want something a little bit 
like a little bit more enticing than that. So maybe we could say visit store would be a good one. Maybe visit store for selling stuff and then select this box so we can actually get some analytics. And one thing I wanna mention as a little side note here, if you're trying to make videos, you wanna edit your own ads, then rather than using, like you could use this, like you do it all on a desktop, which is which is great, but there's also this great free tool called CapCut, which is owned by the same company, uh, ByteDance, that makes TikTok. And so it integrates really well. Everything goes seamlessly. There's a great auto caption tool on there. So uh, if you're just talking, it'll automatically caption everything. Super easy, super free editor that you can use. It's called CapCut. Uh, you can download it on Android or iOS and uh, I've used it many times, it's so useful. So now we can tap on next and we can, it says great job, now select your audience. So our audience right now um, is only United States. So we can say, yeah, United States is fine, but we could edit the targeting as well by tapping on edit targeting. And this is gonna be something, if you know who your audience is, then you definitely wanna narrow this down, but there are so many different, uh, really, you could do a lot of testing with this and figure out what ads run better on what audiences. I'd recommend making multiple campaigns with smaller dollar amounts and just kind of testing and figuring out what makes the most sense for your brand, what's really converting the best. But just kind of showing you what parameters, what the sliders we have that we can move are. And so we've got age. So right now age limit, we don't need that. But you know what, maybe I wanna say, I don't want anybody under the age of 18, maybe less likely to have a disposable income. So we could say 18 to 44. Maybe that's like the range of who I think would be most interested in buying our stuff. The gender, I could just leave that uh, unless you know for certain that maybe your audience is predominantly female, then maybe you'd market more towards females so you don't waste ad dollars on males. Then we can also see the languages. I do want to limit languages just in English. I think if I'm advertising to someone in Japanese, but I speak English, the whole store is in English, like it's not going to be a good experience for them and ultimately they're less likely to buy. Interests, we can choose what they're interested in as well, uh, which I think is super useful here. And we can go down and say, all right, maybe anybody who is interested in, um, let's see if they have, like marketing would be a good one. Maybe tech and electronics would be a good one. We could say apparel and accessories. We could say clothing. Anyone who's interested in clothing maybe would be interested in this. Probably not actually, but marketing and advertising would be a good one. Professional consultation. And so you can go through these obviously dependent on your business and choose which interests make the most sense for you. So now once you choose that, it tells us the audience size on the top is still huge. It's 65 million to 79 million people. So that's a ton of people out there. Um, but you can you know, see how that changes as you select different age groups and things like that. So now I can say next. So let's just say my daily budget is $30 and it'll say estimated daily clicks. Right now, this is not updating for some reason. So I'm gonna say next. Now we can choose our business address, add a payment method, we'll say next. Now I personally like doing this manually at first, just in case I missed something. I don't want it to run wild and rack up a credit card bill. So I'll manually deposit say like $100 or $30 or you know, some small budget just to get started and then we can scale it up from there. So I'm gonna start off with $30 just for the example in this video. We're gonna add a balance. Then I can confirm my payment details. Now that the payment was successful, we can tap on confirm or it just automatically does that. So I'm just gonna not tap anything right now. There we go. So now the final step is to submit. So we have a daily budget, let's just say of, uh, let's do $20. Honestly, you need some data to get reasonable information to make decisions on this. You can't put $5 in and, and really get any meaningful data out of that. I'd recommend higher budgets, uh, maybe around like at least $30. That's, that's pretty low even that, but I'm gonna do that because this is just a tutorial. So I'm gonna say submit. So when we get to the media, you can get something from your camera roll or what I'm gonna do is go to TikTok posts and we can actually make sure that it is linked to our TikTok, which it is. And I'm just going to promote one of those just by tapping on, let's just say that video right there. Now, what I recommend doing is actually tapping on this right here. Now, what I recommend doing is actually tapping on the campaign, tapping on the pencil icon next to it and actually renaming this campaign. So we can call this um, website, website campaign, website campaign number one, submit. And now we have a campaign name change. So if we run multiple campaigns, it's gonna be easier to track which one is doing what just by actually naming them. We can also go over to settings, see what our balance is, see what, uh, what's going on with our account. And so just settings and home, pretty basic. If we tap on plus, that's actually how we can go and start some more campaigns. And it's gonna again ask if we want what, you know, what the reason for that is. And of course we can go through and repeat the, repeat the entire process again.
So that's everything I have for you in this video. I hope you found it helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.